So in this experiment, we are going to be looking at carbohydrate fermentation, or essentially the usage of sugars by different organisms. So we have four different sugars. They look the same pretty much in the tube, so you can't uh, just go by looking. You need to watch your labels. We have glucose, we have lactose, maltose, and sucrose. In these uh, tubes, we have obviously in a broth solution, the uh, sugar. And then we have these inverted tubes, often also known as a Durham tube. What we're going to do is we're going to inoculate this medium with the bacterial culture. Some will not be able to use the particular sugar in question. Now most things will be able to use glucose, but some of the others, some organisms can use them, some cannot. This has the phenol red um, pH indicator added to it. So at a neutral pH, it has this kind of orangish red color. Some organisms, as they break down the sugars, the byproduct is going to be acid. And that's where the pH indicator plays a role. Visually, we'll be able to look at it. When the pH drops to a more acidic or low pH, it turns yellow. And so for some organisms, when we come back and look at this after it's incubated, it will be yellow. You would record that as acid production. In addition, some organisms produce gas. And that's what the inverted tube is for. If gas is produced as a product, it will displace the liquid in this inverted tube and you will get a gas bubble being formed up here, sometimes quite a bit, sometimes just a small amount. So that's what we're going to look for. To inoculate each of these, we're going to use two different cultures. We will use E. coli and Proteus vulgaris. And so we're going to inoculate. So we have the initial culture uh, in a liquid broth. And I'm going to go from that liquid broth into each of those tubes. So we have flamed the loop. We flame our tube, the inoculum. Go into that tube. Sometimes I'm just showing this holding one tube at a time. When you get very experienced with this, you can actually hold two tubes in one hand and just go straight from one to the other. So we're just going to go now into this tube, go down to the bottom, touch along the side. Flame your tube, and that's all there is to it. Now, initially, this is what the all of the tubes look like prior to inoculation. It is that reddish color. And as you can see, the inverted tube is full of fluid. So in this particular uh, one, excuse me, this tube uh, would be classified as a negative because you do not have acid production, you do not have gas production. Now, in this tube, over here, if you look at the inverted tube, it is yellow inside there. So the organism has just started growing. Once again, this is E. coli. So you're starting to get some acid production, but no gas. In this tube, you can definitely tell, obviously it has turned yellow. That would be positive for acid. And then if you look at the inverted tube, you can see there's air bubble in there. So that is positive for gas. So you would record that as AG or acid and gas. This too here would also be recorded as acid plus gas production. Now the Proteus vulgaris, as you can see back here, this too would be a negative. You do not have any change in color. You do not have gas production. This tube is yellow by comparison, which would mean just acid production, but there's no gas. So you need to look when you go to analyze the results, a couple of different things. Has there been a color change? You're looking for acid. In addition, if there was acid production, look at that inverted tube and see if there's a gas bubble that would indicate gas production in addition to acid. Just so you know, you would not have gas production by itself without acid. So your choices are a negative, acid, or acid plus gas.